I'm going to come back to that in a little while because that was a tune recorded by The Temptations as Second. well as yourself uh, and Ball of Confusions. Pardon? Second. Second. We had it out first. I know you had it out first. Yeah, smiling faces out first. Yeah. Fair exchange is no robbery. Okay, okay. So listen, so we'll, 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 we'll get back to that one. Okay. I just want to know, I mean, you've had such a life. I mean, what was it like being at Motown with Stevie Wonder, The Four Tops, The Temptations? What was that like, man? Well, uh, it was very rewarding for me. In fact, I grew up with them, mm -hmm. but to be inside those doors and being a part of that uh, musical assembly, man, mm -hmm. it's just, woo, you just can't imagine. Okay, the studio manager said move, move closer, closer to the, the mic. microphone. Okay, yeah. great, okay. I can do that. Okay. Uh, um, so where did the undisputed truth fit into that Motown roster? <laughs> what, what, what was your part of it all, do you think? Well, we were, uh, I think we were like agents of change. Mm. Things were changing, and in particular, our particular kind of music, as it evolved, there was not any of that kind of music coming out of Motown. No. We got a little funkier, got a little psychedelic, a lot, very psychedelic, <clears throat> a little cosmic. Uh, we we were we were trying to get into the change as it was happening. We was a cross between Sly and the Fifth Dimensions was our concept at yeah. the time. I kind of always <laughs> saw the undisputed truth as kind of like the black response to the Summer of Love. Mm -hmm. If you know, I mean, you know when all the hippies '67 and all of that. Oops. It was when black bands stopped wearing the suits, suits. and doing the syncopated dance routines. That's they right. grew their afros, wore the flares, wore the beads, and got down and dirty. We were the first Motown act that didn't go through that system. <laughs> <laughs> you worked with Norman Whitfield a lot. Yes. I mean, Mr. Psychedelic Soul himself, really. What was what was his influence on your career? Would you say? Boy, Lord have mercy. If I could write a book, <laughs> if I could write a book, say that again. Lord, uh, have, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> if I could write a book, I mean, it was like I went to high school every day mm -hmm. for four years, never missed a day. And I tried not to never miss one day in the studio with Norman Whitfield. Mm -hmm. Never ceased to learn something. Was he like a day. teacher? Was he sort he, of like? He was a teacher. He was a he was a guy that wanted to sing so bad, mm -hmm. and God just said, "Got no voice." <laughs> Got no voice. <laughs> but he had so much soul, mm -hmm. and you can just see it in his face what you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, it got to a point where I learned it, got it down pat. You know, yeah. I, I, at first it was, I was very intimidated, but I went to a session one time with uh, David Ruffin and uh, Paul Williams at, as Norman was doing the temps. Mm -hmm. And I saw that they were going through the same stresses in the studio with him that I was. I got relief because I was really thinking that maybe I'm not ready for this. But Joe, how, how old were you when all this was going on? <clears throat> because to be fair, you look like the Temptations child. You look like <laughs> you look like one of their children. Well, um, how have you aged so bloody well? I, well, one thing is I never stopped doing this. Yeah. I never let it be a job, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, after I, uh, I sat down from performing for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that time, I was doing lots of commercials in the United States. In fact, I got an Emmy with George Clinton for the uh, Tracy Almond show. We did all that music. Did you? You remember when the Simpsons used to go across the stage? Mm -hmm. or when they, yeah. boom, 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 yeah. boom, 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 yeah. boom. That we was you doing, George Clinton? Me, yeah, we were doing that music. Is he as crazy as he was on the radio with me a few more years ago? After Norman Whitfield, George Clinton, <laughs> I would say, is one of the most... A talented record producers and writers oh, he can, who can take that concept and continue it, continue it, continue it, mm -hmm. keeping his P funk funk. Oh, the whole P funk thing is <laughs> it's a phenomenon, isn't it? It's yes, a phenomenon. It is. We'll talk more. We'll talk more, so, Mr. Harris. But so, uh, what are you going to play for us next? <coughs> We're going to do thing by the Peps. From the fabulous Peps. From the fabulous Peps. I've been trying. I've been trying. This is the Craig Charles Funk and Soul Show. We've got uh, the legend, Joe Harris. This is I've been trying. Lord, that I've 
been trying to understand why can I be your only man now? You said you love me. That I believe you love me Yet I can't understand why they Can I be your only man Day after day But my love still remains It's as keep on trying, boy She's gonna change I've been trying Lord knows that I've been trying To understand You know, why can't I be your only man now? Keep on trying Keep on trying She's gonna change I've been trying Lord knows that I've been trying To understand why You know why can't I be your own
fantastic. Joe Harris. Thank you, thank you, sir. With the Stone Foundation. Keep on trying. I'm a bit jealous. <laughs>